Welcome to MacBreak Studio. We're here with Mark Spencer and we're continuing our discussion of Final Cut 10.4's awesome color grading and correction tools. And we're looking at lookup tables. Looking at lookup tables. Looking at LUTs. <laughs> looking at LUTs. <laughs> Let's look at LUTs. Right. Lots of lookup tables, yeah. And you I said this is going to be very technical. Well, I want to cover some things about how Final Cut thinks about LUTs and works with LUTs. There's some new features in 10.4 that make it much easier to work with LUTs or lookup tables. But you need to understand its terminology and how it works with them. There's a lot of confusion about when and where and how to use LUTs. And I want to clarify that in the context of 10.4. So, that sounds um, great. In general, I'm going to start with camera LUTs. So the first thing is that, that Final Cut makes a distinction between camera LUTs and creative LUTs. So let's just talk about camera LUTs. Mm -hmm. Camera LUTs are LUTs that are created by the camera manufacturer, specifically convert a log clip into the delivery color space. Right. I but mean, but that, those camera LUTs are built into Final Cut. They're, for, they're usually built into Final Cut. So let's look at an example. So I've, we've got this shot here that uh, you or your team shot with a Canon camera in, the, in log, mm -hmm. okay? So if I go to the inspector here and I go to the info inspector, I need to change the view from basic to either general or settings. Several of these will show up. I'll choose general. Uh, and now we see the camera LUT and none is applied. Mm -hmm. So if I click the pop-up menu, there are a bunch of camera LUTs, manufacturer LUTs that ship with Final Cut that are built in. So for instance, you shot in Canon, so I can choose the Canon LUT. And immediately that dynamic range is greatly expanded. Yeah, it's stretched. So the purpose of that LUT is, in this case, it puts it in the Rec. 709 color space. Mm -hmm. And it makes it look like it was shot. It should look the same as it was shot. Right. Okay? Now, you may or may not want to use that LUT. We'll get to that in just a minute. You saw I had to assign it manually, but usually, it's assigned automatically on import. In fact, I took it off just to show where it is. If I go to this next shot that I shot with my Panasonic GH4, GH4. which I got to get that GH5, it just looks fantastic. But you can see the camera LUT was automatically applied, the Panasonic V-Log. You really want to use the correct LUT because the LUT is created by that manufacturer intentionally to map their log their log curve to the Rec. They created the space. math, they know the math. Yeah, so you really need to use the correct one. Now, the other thing is, if I go to this next shot, this is a shot with a black magic camera. Let's say a new camera comes out or a firmware update comes out on a camera that allows it to shoot log. So a new, uh, that camera manufacturer makes a new LUT. It's not built into Final Cut. Right. So in the past, we had to wait for an update to Final Cut Pro that will support it. Not anymore. Check this out. You can go to the camera LUT pop-up menu and you can go down and choose add custom camera LUT. So as soon as the manufacturer makes that LUT available, you can install it. You don't have to wait. So That's for great. instance here, I'll go here and I'll navigate to where I have some LUTs. And this was a Black Magic. So there's a Black Magic film to Rec. 709. And this is important. I need to know that. And the output color space is important. Now we're working in standard dynamic range projects right now, which is Rec. 709. We'll talk in another episode about working in HDR. So I'll choose that. And when I do so, immediately, immediately it's applied. If we look at the pop-up menu, it's added to its own category of custom LUTs. And I can choose to reveal it in the finder. What's cool about that is I can get that and move it to another system really easily. Right. Because rather than going through the import process, you can just drop them in here. In fact, you can drop a whole bunch in here if you want. Right. A whole folder of LUTs. You can drop a whole folder, but they'll all automatically default to Rec. 709. So you just need to be aware of that. Okay. You know, if you're doing the HDR stuff, you want to import them individually or import them so you can choose That's from the That's a really menu. important point. So the question is then, okay, when should you use a camera LUT? And this comes down to some personal taste. So um, you can use it as a starting point for a grade because it really puts it in your delivery color space. And if it was shot well, you could be done. Right. The LUT basically is your grade. You can also tweak it from there. You can add your color corrections on top of the LUT. The camera LUT is processed first in the processing order. So if you're doing extreme color correction where you're really working with shadow and highlight detail, that camera LUT can clip the values that you can't get back. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's really best when you've got proper exposure to begin with, you're not doing a lot of color grading after the fact. There's no reason you couldn't say, hey, I'm just gonna grade this without a LUT. I'll turn that LUT off, uh, Command-6, and I'll expand the range, the dynamic range, and I'll boost the saturation, and I can do hey, my- it looks like a LUT. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, there's no reason, you don't have to use a LUT. Right. The LUT puts it, it matches how it was shot. So often it's a good idea, but you don't have to use a sure. LUT. So I just wanna bring that up. Um, so now let's talk about creative LUTs. Creative LUTs are used to create a kind of a look. Right. And I'll show you an example here. This is where things, I think, get really interesting because creative LUTs are applied as an effect. They're not right. applied the way we just saw. They're applied right. as an effect. So they're effect in the effect chain. Right. So I have a shot here that if we go back to the info inspector, we'll shot with an RE uh, camera and it already has the RE Logsy camera LUT applied. Mm -hmm. That doesn't keep me from applying a creative LUT to it as well. The important thing to know is, was that creative LUT created, it meant to be applied to a clip that's already in the Rec. 79 space or not? Right. Many of them are, and it should say in the name. And that's where you can't just willy-nilly throw LUTs on things and expect, a, yeah, and expect it to work out. Yeah, with clipping or all kinds of different yeah, stuff. Yeah, it just won't work right if, if it was meant to be applied to a clip that's in log versus a clip that's already been put in Rec. 709. Right. So what I'm gonna do is go to the effects browser and in the color category, we have a new custom LUT effect. So I'll apply the custom LUT effect to this clip. Then I'll go to the video inspector and in this LUT pop-up menu, I can choose a custom LUT. You can buy them from people. You can go to get them for free. Color Grading Central has them. Um, FCPX Free yeah. has a bunch of LUTs. So you can find them for free on the internet. You can buy them from different folks. You can create them. You can export them from DaVinci Resolve or Scratch. Or Premiere. Or Premiere yeah. or 3D LUT Creator. Mm -hmm. you can, there's different things you can do to create your own LUTs. Now, it's important to understand, as we talked about before, whether it should be applied to a clip that's log or is already in the Rec. 709 color space. And some of them are clear, like here, Alexa Log Seed Rec. 709. Okay, it needs to be applied to a log clip. Or here's a Rec. 709 one. Sometimes it's not really clear. I'm going to choose this one here called Fashion Victim because I want to show you something. Fashion Victim. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll click Open, and it immediately has a pretty dramatic impact on the clip. Yep. Okay. Now remember, this clip has a camera LUT already applied that puts it in Rec. 79 color space. The airy LUT. And then, and then it has this creative LUT. Now we can add color correction to this. And here's where things get interesting. I'll hit Command-6 in order to add the color corrector. And let's say I want to get some of the shadow detail back. I've completely crushed the shadows here. If I try to raise the shadows, see how everything You're not goes getting out? any detail back. No, I can't. It's, just, it's just lifting it. It's lifting. It's not expanding it in any way. Right. So I'll undo that. But here's the cool thing. If I go to the uh, video inspector and I'll close this, we can just see our order of operations. That color wheels is after. But I want to put color wheels before so that the custom LUT is the last thing in the chain. So now when I go to color wheels and I work on the shadows, look, I can expand that shadow detail, okay, which yeah. I couldn't do before because the, the LUT was clamping it, right. but now I have access. So that's a really cool thing is that the custom LUT effect that loads creative LUTs can be placed at the end of the color correction chain. Or, be, or between other color correctors. Or between, well, between, or between the creative LUT that you first, sorry, the custom, <laughs> I'm having trouble with it, the camera LUT that you applied at the beginning of the chain, then you've got your cam, your corrections, and you can finish with a creative LUT and put it at the end of the chain so it will not clamp any corrections in between. Are you pulling my chain? <laughs> so a lot of different LUTs, but the basic the idea is to understand the difference between camera LUTs and creative LUTs and where they fall in the processing order. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, again, just another uh, seemingly you know, small feature, but huge ramifications in terms of controlling the final output of your image. Exactly. Right, so if you like this, check out Mark's advanced color grading tutorial available on our site. We still have a lot more to talk about and uh, want to check us out on our usual social media channels. And uh, we'll see you next time on MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.